Hi everybody, welcome to a Strength, Yoga, and Freedom Rewind episode. That's right, this episode originally aired on February 7th of 2023, and it's all about FOMO. I'm gonna teach you in this episode three ways that you can combat FOMO. If you don't know what FOMO stands for, FOMO is an acronym for the fear of missing out. And the three things that I'm gonna teach you work really, really hand in hand with yoga off their mat. So fasten your seatbelt and get ready for a great episode as we rewind and revisit a phenomenal episode of the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom podcast right now. The fear of missing out is something that a growing number of people experience on a day-to-day basis and where it all stems from may really surprise you. So today I am going to be going over three big ways that you can start to combat the FOMO you may be experiencing in your life. Hello everybody, it's Justin and welcome to the Strength, Yoga and Freedom podcast. Yes, this is the podcast where we use the philosophy of yoga in a practical and everyday way, one small step at a time to become happier people. So what are these three big ways that we can start to work with, with that whole fear of missing out that we all experience? Well, I'm gonna teach them to you in just a moment. But first, please be sure to consider subscribing to our weekly email. Yes, it's only one email per week, and I give you all of the information that is coming up in future episodes of this podcast, future content on our YouTube channel, and bonus and exclusive coaching and content that I don't talk about on the podcast. So wherever you listen to this podcast, visit the show notes so that you can sign up for that email list. You can also follow me at Justin Ricky Yoga on Instagram and you will find the link through my bio. And remember, I only send one email per week. And again, you can follow me at Justin Ricky Yoga. So what really is FOMO and where does this come from? Well, psychologists will tell us and have put the research out there that many of us do one of two things with regards to FOMO, and here they are. Number one, we either overcommit to things and then we kind of fail to fulfill those commitments, or number two, we don't take on anything, we don't commit and we avoid. Those are the two things that psychologists tell us that many of us do with regards to FOMO. And the reason we do these things is directly in the acronym of FOMO, the first letter, fear. As always on this podcast, we turn our attention to how this relates to growing stronger and moving towards happiness within those roots and the practice of yoga off the mat. And that topic is Santosha, or contentment. Personally, I struggle a lot with FOMO myself. I don't know if you do, but I do because of the conditions that I was brought up in. You see, it's no secret that the world that you are brought up in directly influences your choices and behavior as an adult. Not all the behaviors and not all your decisions, but the correlation is there, as we know. And if you are raised in a home where there is always a fear of not being like everyone else or doing what everyone else is doing or acting like everyone else is acting, et cetera, et cetera, the FOMO starts to take over. You start to create that habit in your mind. And now with technology and being constantly connected through technology, there is a whole new level to the fear of missing out online as well as in person. Therefore, as adults, we really have to work on that area of our life that maybe we have created the habit of FOMO in. And as I said, that comes from fear. There's something inside of us that thinks that if we are not doing or not being or not accessing what the majority of others are doing or being or accessing, that we're going to lose that sense of gratification that we all seek, right? But Santosha teaches us that being content and opening up ourselves to that higher version of ourself, maybe we open up our heart, our soul, whatever you want to call that, to a sense of gratitude and actually not seeking things. 
One of the big points of Santosha I want you to remember right now is this. This really helps with FOMO. The more you look for it, the more it will elude or run away from you. Really think about that for a moment. The more you look at it, the more it will elude or run away from you. If you are in a moment where you feel really happy, really satisfied, really calm, really at peace, you're just that. You're at peace, you're calm, you're just chilling out. But what about when something disrupts that? Can you be content with that disruption or are you going to start seeking out ways to get out of the disruption? This is where FOMO comes from. When you feel like whatever state you are in should not be the state you are in and you need something more. Like if you're bored, where would your mind go if you're actually bored? Can you actually enjoy the boredom or does it make you squirm if you're actually sitting and just being? So, now that you understand more of how yoga and FOMO connect, let's get into the three things that you can do to battle FOMO right now. All right, here we go. Number one, an easy one, and I teach it on here so much. This is really easy. Do one thing at a time. An example of this that I love using is when you look at cleaning out a closet. Many of us look at the closet and we get so overwhelmed because we've thrown all that crap in there and because it seems so monumental to go through all of that, organize it, throw things away, give things away, whatever you need to do. But what if you just took 10 minutes a day for cleaning? Just 10 minutes. The research shows that multitasking actually results in the human brain only being able to truly focus on one action request at a time. So when you give your full attention to one thing instead of some attention to many things, you are more likely to produce a much more high quality result. Plus, your level of satisfaction will be higher. That's what the research shows us. And I think that if you think about that and when I think about that, When you actually have produced something that you've really put your attention into, your concentration into, you do feel a lot more gratification, satisfaction, you feel productive after that task or that project or whatever it is has been completed because you really took the time and effort to be concerned, to cultivate it, and to really put your energy there. So just taking time to do one thing at a time will train your brain to stop going in a hundred different directions. A lot of us think multitasking is a good thing. And in some levels and on some degree, it is a good thing. But when you're talking about big, life-changing things, especially when we're dealing with FOMO, when we're constantly feeling like we're gonna miss something and we wanna tackle a zillion things all at once just to get to the next thing that we're missing out on, that's when we can lead us into trouble. So focusing on one thing at a time helps with FOMO right away. So that's the first thing. Number two, be willing and open to not having it all. Yes, that's right, you don't need it all. Imagine that you can actually stop and go over what your highest priorities are in your life, which is very important to do from time to time. Maybe your highest priority is your family, your income, a skill you're learning, a project that you're working on, maybe it's a side hustle, a new language you're learning, your main job, and of course, and most importantly, yourself. Having the ability to enjoy that what you have is more than enough is much wiser than having the impulses and needs for gratification from a ton of different avenues. This gives you clear attention to what you have prioritized now and it piggybacks off of number one, what I just talked about in number one about doing one thing at a time, where you're focusing on just that one thing with good, valuable attention. This again puts Santosha right into play when we're talking about yoga as we actually stop seeking everything and start releasing our focus down to a few high priorities. So we're anxious to get to number three. It's coming right up after this short break. Okay, welcome back to number three. Here it is. Now, as I mentioned, FOMO is that fear of not having something, and it's actually the fear 
of not having something that we deem is necessary for happiness. But what if you went into an attitude of gratitude? Yes, number three is an attitude of gratitude. You had that day at work where nothing seemed to go your way. Then you got home same day and nothing seemed to go your way. And then that anxiety creeps up and now you have had a bad day. My friends, bad days are actually good for you. And I'm going to teach you why that is in the next episode of this podcast. So if you haven't turned on the reminders in your app or wherever you listen to the podcast on, go do that so that you will be reminded when that new episode comes up or all of the episodes come up and you can schedule your listening time in. But back to having the attitude of gratitude, that means that no matter where you are, you develop a very deep appreciation for what you have rather than spending your time worried about what you don't have. This is really hard, right? This is really hard because we always like to focus on the things we don't have. We're constantly seeking. And when we feel like we aren't getting what we want, boom, FOMO hits. And when you begin to just be in the moments that you're in, uncomfortable or not, like that bad day, which is so uncomfortable, when you begin to be in those moments, you train yourself to be grateful for what the moment is teaching you And then you feel that overwhelming sense of gratitude. The gratitude that you feel will propel you to understand what the universe or higher power or whatever you believe in is trying to teach you. This parallels Santosha again in yoga as it turns out that when you feel like a tree that's rooted into the earth big time, that no wind or storm will topple you over or knock you over. You're gonna shake, you're gonna sway, but you will stay grounded and content in where you are instead of worrying about where everyone else is so that you can be happier. Because chasing after where everyone else is for happiness is the wrong place to be chasing as I've just taught you in this episode. So let me recap the three things that can help you combat this FOMO right away. Number one, do one thing at a time to maximize your outcome. Number two, be open to not having it all because the all that you think you want is something you have made up. You've made that up. It's not something that's real. You've made that up. And number three, the attitude of gratitude always looking at the lesson being taught and being grateful for it, which turns the focus inward instead of turning the grat- towards the gratification coming from what everyone else is doing or what everyone else has. Now on Thursday, we are going to be discussing having a bad day, as I mentioned just a bit ago, and what that is teaching you as part of the theme this week, which is all about chilling out. So just being okay with where you are always so you're not continuously seeking. That's kind of what chilling out is. You're just chilling. You Yet, while you're chilling, you are open and ready for what is being presented right in front of you, which a lot of us miss because we're worried about what everyone else is doing or we have that FOMO going on. And none of this is bad. None of this, what I teach you or the ways we're trying to overcome things is bad the things that we're overcoming, those things aren't bad either. What we're doing is taking these small steps towards happiness and the things that we've developed growing up in the world that we're growing up in or living now in as adults is trying to teach us the opposite. And we are rooted and we are grounded in this community of strength, yoga, and freedom and committed to making our lives better than maybe they were the day before. So I want to thank you all for being here and listening and your support of this podcast. And I cannot wait to see you on Thursday's episode. We'll see you then. Okay, one last thing. The content in the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom podcast is not intended as a replacement or a substitution for the advice of any medical professional, like a physician, a psychologist, or a qualified therapist, or any other medical professional. It is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only.